Hello everybody, today I'm doing an unboxing of my brand new Alan Edmund McNeils. So uh, let's see what's inside. Thank you, Sophia. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. You can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread. So here it goes. Now that's a proper mirror shine. We're both done, doesn't it look awesome? Hello everybody, I am in front of Alan Edmonds here in Woodmere, uh, Northeast Ohio near Cleveland, uh, east, uh, close to the east side of Cleveland. So I wasn't allowed to videotape inside the Alan Edmonds store, show you fitting or any of that kind of stuff, but basically went in. They ordered me a size 11 and a half triple E as well as a 12 E uh, to compare the two. And uh, let me go ahead and show you the 11 and a half triple E, which I felt fit better. And let's get to the unboxing. Okay, so let's start with the unboxing. Uh, second, I will um, actually be putting on a little bit of a patina on them. I'm going to just, uh, uh, you know, make some changes, slight changes to the color, a little bit of a, a patina slash burnishing. I'm just going to slightly darken some of the areas. And I want to get a similar result, as you can see here on my McAllister's. This has been completely done with polish, and I'll explain why I'm going to do it with uh, dye instead of polish. Um, and then thirdly, I'm going to clean them up, and I'll show you the finished result. So let's get started. So you can see they come very nicely boxed, right? And I just picked these up uh, at the Allen Edmonds store in Woodmere, Ohio, which is a near Beechwood. And you can see they come in the bags. Um, I have already looked at them. I checked them out at the store, um, but I've not done anything else with them. So there's one. I wish you guys could smell this right now. And there's the other one. So here they are. So um, uh, this is the, obviously the McNeil. And you can see this new logo that came out in, I believe, about September of uh, 2018. At the filming of this video, it is uh, July of 2019. And uh, this is a long wing. You can see the wing tip goes all the way to the back. Uh, long wing blucher. You can also call it a derby. And um, yeah, they're awesome. They're beautiful. This color is ox blood. Uh, this color is also ox blood. This, these shoes were purchased in 2017, although I've darkened them a bit um, with polish. They were a little bit lighter. So it seems like the, you know, at least from my experience, um, the ox blood shoes are making this, this shoe, I would say, the McNeil's. I would say have a little bit of a browner tone and they do they do have some variation they tell you that in person on the website because they're hand finished um, although i saw two pairs this pair here is a pair of 11 and a half triple e's they ordered into the store a pair of 12 e's to see which would fit better and they both had their very 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 similar colored finish you can see the medallion on the cap toe there right now here's one thing i noticed right here not perfect. It's not bad. The way that piping kind of gets a little bit fatter right there. But I'm looking at the welting all the way around. Hmm. Interesting here. You can see the stitching got kind of close to the edge of the sole there. I'm guessing that's because that's going to be dependent upon when they when they stitch the shoe, what angle you hold the shoe to relative to the stitching needle. Um, one thread there is popping up higher. The logo does look nice there on the arch. If I can get the right light. And uh, Brian at the uh, Woodmere store calls this the victory heel. Right. And I'd say the finish around the edge of the heel is very good. I wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells great. Obviously, you already know if you know anything about Allen Edmonds, you can see that rich full grain leather. All right. The right shoe. This is the one, actually. You see where the uh, piping there, that's just the way that's a, uh, you know, I would not return a shoe for that. Um, we're nitpicking here a little bit. You know, these are first world problems, but. 
And again, I'm looking at the, at least it's consistent. The stitching got a little bit closer to the toe there. One interesting point that Brian pointed out um, about these shoes, you can see here, obviously the soles have a channel through which the Goodyear welting is stitched. Um, here, I'm gonna show you a pair of new old stock Allen Edmonds. These were produced in the 80s. I don't remember the exact year, but sometime in the 80s. Can you see how, first of all, the stitching is denser. Um, it's hard to tell. A denser stitch is better because it gives you more attachment points. So when the thread wears through, you know, over here where the thread does actually wear through, when you walk, you've got more knots holding the sole to the welt. So more stitching is actually better. But if you notice, it's not really recessed very far. And uh, Brian told me that when they started to change their manufacturing process, they put a groove in the sole first, then the later manufacturing process is to, this one is just basically stitching in one step. This one, they put a groove in one step and then in a second step, they stitch it because that gives the stitcher a groove to follow. Where here, there's no groove to follow. So this kind of stitching requires more skill. I thought that was pretty interesting, but anyway. And I'm looking for any flaws. You can see some wrinkling there, but I would not consider that a flaw. That's what you're supposed to get when you get some full grain leather. Yeah, stitching, I don't know. Is it sticking up there? It's okay. I'm very pleased with them. By the way, these shoes with full retail price, which I don't believe you should you should pay, are uh, three hundred and ninety five dollars. Um, I got them on sale Father's Day sale, and they were two twenty. I would consider that a, consider that an excellent price. All right, pretty awesome. So what I want to do with these again is take my mahogany die, and I'm just going to add a little bit of darkening to to certain areas. Okay. So, check out the heels on both of them. Gorgeous. Oh, one other note. This leather here, I think he called it uh, a butyl leather. This leather, uh, these are double oak soles. You can see the thickness of the sole compared to, this is the single oak on the top, double oak on the bottom. But uh, this leather is infused, apparently, with oil. It makes it more flexible. And that is because it's a double oak sole. They want a little more flexible sole, uh, you know, because it's such an increased thickness. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So, all right. A couple other noteworthy things. Um, I just remembered something after I pulled the laces up. So let me show you, uh, compared to a pair of McNeil's um, that I wear that were purchased, uh, I'm sorry, these were produced, I think, somewhere around 2013 to 2013 to 16, based on the uh, logo. Can you see on the insole here? Can you see that? Let me get the angle of the light right. So there's stitching supporting the arch, okay? We can see on the new ones, they have no such, if I can get the lighting right, I apologize, but you, they don't have that stitching there. So what I was told um, was that the reason that they stopped doing that is because in some cases you would see lines on the outside of the shoe where that stitching is. I don't see that on mine. Um, so I guess the aesthetics is better this way, but not quite as much support from the arch. Anyway, so oh, I didn't get to show you all the way down into the shoe either. It's pretty beautiful. You can see there. That actually says custom cork insole, handcrafted in America, fine imported leather McNeil. Isn't that cool? Well, so, and so there's a couple little minor differences, I guess you can say in the, you know, as they change the shoe. So, so let me show you guys what I've been messing with here and struggling with for a little bit. Now, um, here is my other pair of Allen Edmonds and McAllister's, as I mentioned before. Um, I have darkened these slightly just with polish mainly on the toe, okay? Um, so I would say the, uh, the new McNeils are um, slightly darker than the McAllister's, than my older McAllister's. Um, uh, similar hue, but slightly darker. If for a comparison, here is the um, Kilgore French and Stanberry. 
Oxford that I did the color change video on. Now in the video here, I know this appears brown compared to this, but these really have a definite red hue to them, which you really don't see unless you put them next to an actual brown shoe. So this is actually, this is actually brown. Do you see the red hue to it? But I, I guess what I'm trying to achieve is I want something darker, okay, where I don't have to put black polish on the toe, um, but not as brown. This is on the browner side. So let me show you the, the dye that I used to achieve this. This shoe is tan, so the base color makes a difference too. This is the Phoebing's Mahogany right here, okay? This is mahogany, is what this color is. And when I pour a little bit of it out, you can see it appears brown on the paper, even though it's got a red hue to it. So that mahogany dye on a tan shoe produced this brownish red, okay? Deep burgundy, I, I don't know what the official color name would be. So here's a dark red, okay? This is dark red Phoebings, you can see here. So the dark red Phoebings. Now what I did was I put a little bit on the tongue where you weren't gonna see it. So here's the tongue. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take you guys into my laundry room where there's better light. So I think the lighting is better here, truer in the laundry room. Um, once again, uh, brown, tan shoe dyed mahogany, Allen Edmonds, Allen Edmonds Oxblood darkened with polish, um, factory Allen Edmonds. This right here, that is what you get when you apply the dark red on top of the Oxblood. That's the result right there okay this right here is what happens when you put the mahogany on it you get the resulting color really looks browner okay the ox blood went towards the brown side which I do not want this is about two parts mahogany to one part I'm sorry two parts of dark red two parts dark red to one part mahogany it browned it up a little bit you see that's like almost too purple that's too brown that's probably closer to what I want. But now that I'm really looking at it, I don't think it's worth messing with. You know what I mean? To airbrush the entire shoe, I think I'm just leaning away from it. Um, I don't know, to go and hairbrush the whole shoe and then have to try and darken this, I think it's, I think the net result is just going to be too little result for too much work and too much risk to a pair of brand new shoes. So I think I'm going to skip it. So what is step one with these brand new shoes? Uh, step one is actually using Kiwi Saddle Soap. Okay, I have a whole nother video on Saddle Soap. This is warm water in the lid. Um, now why? Well, first of all, you see this logo? See this? This is the pre-2018 uh, uh, logo. Okay, and the, well, there it is there actually on the sole. Okay, that same pre-2018 and earlier logo. This is the September 2018 and later logo, okay? So basically, um, if you see the shoe that has the later logo in a older box, that probably means the shoe's been sitting on the shelf for a while. So we definitely want to moisturize them, okay? So generally always start with a left shoe first. And I guess I could really, to be honest with you, I can lose all this tape, but it doesn't hurt to have it there. So I might as well remove it. Saddle soap doesn't just clean leather, it moisturizes it. If you want to learn more, again, click on the other video when you're done with this one, and uh, you know, you'll learn all about saddle soap, but it actually does condition and moisturize leather. It doesn't just clean it. difference darkened it a little bit all right step two here uh, Tanner's blend by Ashland leather company uh, I've said this before this is the uh, same um, formula that they actually use at Horween Ashland leather company is a company owned 
uh, by a few gentlemen that actually work at Horreen. And this is actually the same lanolin um, solution that they use to moisturize the leather that comes from the factory. So I don't know that this is Horween leather, but if it's good enough for Horween, that makes the top notch, uh, you know, makes the top notch uh, leather for Allen Edmonds, then it's good enough for me to moisturize my new shoes. This is mainly mink oil. This is actually Burgundy. I've called this Bordeaux. That's the French name. So this would be Burgundy number eight. Uh, this is the uh, soft cr softer cream polish. And um, this is a little bit on the purpler side compared to uh, compared to the mahogany. And I want to highlight the purpler side of this color. So this is this is definitely what I want to use. can be pretty liberal with it and load it up. Set up, horsehair brush. Soft shine, I would call this a soft shine on them. Not bad, huh? Next, I'm going to use the Allen Edmonds Ox Blood Polish. Okay, now this, oh, there it is. This, all you do with this, you see it coming out there? Squeeze until you get some on there. Let's see? And that's going to load up that sponge. All right. A little more out. You get the idea. coming along here huh now for the spit shine yeah I think I'm ready for the spit shine on the toe cap now for the spit shine this is sapphire this is the mirror gloss medal I don't know how to say it in French the American pronunciation medal Dior mirror gloss um, this is the black okay this is not gonna turn it black but it's gonna tint it darker and there's the neutral I'm gonna put a couple coats of the uh, black on first only other thing you need outside of that is just a, you know, 
dish, dish with some water in it so you can dab the, you know, so you can dab water onto the shoe, okay? So, this is just a t-shirt. It's very hard and crumbly, and that's okay. And I want you to watch the surface texture. I haven't done this side yet. Watch that surface texture. Do you see the bumpiness of oh, that full green leather? That's going to go away as we build up a mirror glass. And it's going to flex across here, so I'm not going to go too far back. The first coat can go, to little, can go a little further back. Subsequent are going to be less. That's it. Okay, just start it here, across here. That's all it needs. And let that set up and do the other shoe. Back to this first shoe. It's only been a few minutes, but a little drop of water. You see that? Just got a little drop of water in there. And look. They took it, so I'm going to add a little more. filling in. Heels and soles. All right, guys. Hey, this is kind of exciting for me anyway. First piece of uh, fan mail here. So I'm going to give a huge shout out to Bernardo, uh, Bernardo Fernandez um, in uh, California, uh, Ukiya. I might be mispronouncing the city, but in Ukiya, California. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much. Huge shout out to you. So. Let's see what we've got here. I'll keep my fingers out of the way. Oh, jackpot here, man. Look at this. Oh. oh. Dang. Oh, you should smell this box. Oh, large shoe trees. Holy mackerel. I'll have to match them up here. Wow. Look at all this. That 
that might be a pair. L six, maybe not. L. I think that's a pair. I think that's another pair. And then I think I got two leftover rights. Wow. That's pretty awesome, man. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably find uh, people that I know that need shoe trees, and I will start giving these out to them, you know? So um, thank you very much, Bernardo. Like I said, I'll put these to good use, um, and um, I'm going to give these out to people who, uh, you know, kind of like I know that uh, don't have shoe trees, and hopefully they'll start using them. So thank you very much. All right, guys, you got to see this. So these are the two leftover shoe trees, right, that, uh, that uh, Mr. Bernard was very gracious to send me. And I just went through my box of extra shoe trees here. And look what I found. Let me get this one out of the way. Look at this. I have a left shoe tree that did not have a right. They're both the same size. They're both large, right? They're both the same size. They're both the same, you know, length. They both have the same, you know, end on them. And they both even have a matching leather strap. Like, what are the chances of that? That's awesome. So here they are finished up, just for reference, next to the Oxblood Allen Edmonds McAllister's, the Mahogany Dyed uh, Kilgore French and Stanberries, and the Brown Allen Edmonds. And they did darken up a bit, didn't they? So I'm glad I didn't mess with them, you know? And better light. And the pores are not 100% filled in, but do you see what I'm talking about? What that spit shine and mirror shine does? By the way, one thing I noticed while I was shining these things, I did find a flaw. Where is it? Right there. Notice one of the uh, holes was not punched all the way through. But that's okay. So thank you very much for watching everybody here. As we close out, I'll show you some more shots as I usually do in my videos like this. Um, you know, some uh, casual shots, some aesthetically pleasing shots of the shoes. Um, these shoes are going to be great for walking long distances. Um, I think these shoes are going to be great also for wearing with uh, uh, like a sport coat and slacks. Um, and even with jeans, you know, and going out, it's going to be an extremely versatile shoe. And uh, so, uh, like I said, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to comment below um, and subscribe if you'd like. Turn on the notification bell so you'll be noticed when new videos come out. And what I will be doing after I break these shoes in and get a chance to wear them a little bit is I'll probably do a full review on them. All right, God bless you guys. Take care.